Good morning, modern steaders. Last week, we got the barn delivered that we ordered from the internet, and I said when that video hits 50,000 video views, we'll make a video on the plans and design of the barn. And guess what, guys? It hit 50,000 subscribers last night. Today, we're gonna talk about the barn. But first, we gotta get all the animal chores done. I hear Moose crowing. He's saying, hey, we want some food, dude. Morning, Moose. How are we doing this morning? You gonna give us a little crow? No. This ice bank's gonna be here for a long time, I bet you. If you're new to the channel, let me take a minute and say thanks for stopping over and introduce myself. I'm Al. We live in northern New Hampshire where we're building our farm. We've been stuck in the winter tundra since November. Once that melts and the mud dries up, we'll be able to build the barn. We ordered a barn kit as a Black Friday sale off the internet. It got delivered and it sits up there last week. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to that video right here. That was a really neat delivery. I couldn't, I was completely amazed with how they delivered the barn kit. You'll have to go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. The countdown continues to when we bring home the new goat. We're looking forward to that. Less than a week, we'll have a new goat on the property. And speaking of barn and goats, <laughs> one of the reasons we're getting the barn is so we can expand our goat operation. In the new barn, we'll keep the female goats. And the goat barn right now, that'll turn into where we keep the male goats. We wanna get a couple of males this summer. So we'll have our own box on the homestead for breeding. And we'll keep them over here away from the female goats. Because male goats tend to taint the milk if you keep them too close to the female. Good morning, girl. You girls, will, you girls like the parkour goats. There's your alfalfa pellets. We're hoping our goat Willow is pregnant which we believe she is, and if she is, her due date is May 12th. Our goats, we have them for milking, they're dairy goats. The two smaller goats have not been bred yet. This fall, we will breed them. So right now behind me, we have the goat barn right now. We wanna put the new barn down here, and the plan is we have it here, We'll have the male goats over here, but also, we live in a northern climate that gets a lot of snow. <laughs> so if I walk over this way, the goat barn is right there. We have an old lane here that we cleaned up last fall. It connects to our other driveway. So my goal is, is to be able to use this for a driveway for the barn. We'll be able to drive up it, plow it. We can plow all the snow down here if we put the barn over here, then we can come down here, plow this snow here, come down, 
and we can plow in front of the barn this way. So we'll have an L and it should make it pretty convenient to get to the barn in the winter time. With all the snow we've gotten this winter, we haven't had any time to do any planning to exactly the correct positioning of the barn or trimming any of the trees. We'll be doing that once the snow melts. Depending on the location, I might have to move some of this rock wall if the barn comes up too far so we can still plow down this way. Living in a northern climate like we do, we try to plan for snow location and snowfall. This way it makes it easier for plowing, it makes it easier for access to the barns. We try to plan which way the roofs are going so when the snow falls off the roof, they're not falling off in front of our doors. When the snow comes off of a roof, it is heavy and wet and really hard to move. <sighs> so I got some of the plans for the barn right here in my hand. But I thought to give us a little bit of perspective, we talk about the outdoor kitchen a little bit. If you guys want to know more about the outdoor kitchen, I'll put a link to that playlist right here when we built that last summer. Something summer before that. Ah, it's been two years. Crazy. But the main part of our outdoor kitchen, not the roof line, but the square part, is 16 feet long and it's 16 feet deep. It is I want to say 16 feet tall 15 or 16 feet tall so the reason I wanted to tell you that the barn we're building which is here I'll do it up close in a minute is 14 feet tall the main center part of the building is going to be 16 feet wide so this is going to be the width of the center part we'll go inside the outdoor kitchen where there's a little bit less sun and I'll show you the plans you're coming in with us Figaro you gotta hang out. I ordered the barn as a kit off the internet. This right here is the main center section diagram of how we're gonna put it together. It's gonna be 16 feet this way and 30 feet this way. So we're gonna we're gonna do a garage door. You can get swing open doors, but with us with all of our snow load, swing open big doors isn't a good thing. So it's post and beam construction. It's made out of four by four post and beams. I believe they're out of hemlock. We're gonna do board and batten siding. We're gonna do a green metal roof. We're gonna have a loft up high. Let um, me get a, this is my hand sketch drawing. <laughs> so the center section is 16 feet. And then on each side, we're gonna do overhangs that are eight feet. So the center section right here is gonna be the workshop slash garage and whatever other kind of tinkering we need to do. We're going to have an 8 foot overhang on this side and an 8 foot overhang on this side. And these are going to be our animal stalls and storage. Let me show you. This is a picture of one. It's not the same size, but it's close. They did concrete under the, the whole building. We're going to do a concrete slab right in the center that's 16 feet wide by 30 feet long. The two sides that are going to be barn stall areas, we're gonna do gravel. This is better for animals' feet. So there's this one that's got the dual overhang on each side, not the best picture. This is one that's a really nice picture with one overhang. We're gonna do two, so this side right here is gonna look the same as this side. I really like the looks of that, I think that looks nice. We're doing the board and batten siding, just like this. It's a post and beam kit we bought online. We're customizing it a little bit, guys. We can't just go standard. So we're gonna do the center section, and then we're gonna do the overhangs, and we're gonna customize the stalls to the way we want it. I have an idea in my head, but until I know the exact location of the barn, and we kind of get some building done, I don't know the exact layout yet of how the stalls are gonna go. But that's like minor details, so. That's the main look. So we got the transom windows, which I think is really nice. Gives it the nice old-fashioned feel. We'll have a walk-through door. And then, then we're going to have some six-pane windows. One on each side. And if we want, we can add more later on. We're going to be doing a green roof like this to match the goat barn. The construction of it is going to be really fun. Being all post and beam and... Basically, this is how we're going to put it together. I have better directions than this. It's a kit. It's all numbered. Tells you how to put it together. It's going to be fun being able to put a kit together. 
all the construction we do here, we make it as we go. So it's gonna be fun to have everything pre-cut, notched, and just building, building it. I just love building and creating in general. I've been talking with the company that makes the kit and we're gonna do a tour of their facility of how they make the buildings, how they pre-cut everything. We'll check out all the buildings they have there. They have a bunch of buildings that are pre-assembled. So that's gonna be fun. This is one of their smaller buildings. So they do sheds, they do smaller buildings like this, and they do bigger posts than beam buildings. They'll have all of that on the property. That's gonna be so much fun to check out and see. Um, if you have any other questions about the barn that I didn't answer, leave it in the comments down below. I'm trying to think. We got the. I'm excited to go do the factory tour. It's gonna be a lot of fun seeing how they're made from start to finish. They get all the material brought to them as logs, and then they mill it all. It's just wild. So we're trying to figure out a time for that. Hopefully, shortly, we'll be doing that road trip. Overall, the width of the barn is gonna be 32 feet. So you got eight, 16, eight. So you got 32 feet, it's gonna be 30 feet deep. So we're gonna be able to have a lot of animals in here and we'll be able to do a lot of projects in the barn. This will help us expand our homestead. We'll be able to bring more animals on. I'm excited, I'm hoping we can figure out an area so we can have more baby chicks raising earlier, like this time of the year. Right now it's hard for us because it's so cold. We can't raise chicks till later. So if we can start hatching them here on the property earlier, that's gonna be fun. That's one thing I haven't told you either. We got a nice incubator to start trying out. It's a prototype. It's in a box in the basement. We're waiting to get some eggs to hatch, but we gotta, it's gonna be fun. I'd really like to dive deeper into the chicken end and hatching of our own chicks. And then kind of like, not our own breed, but I want to get more into the egg production. But I want to get more into the fancy eggs. I like having a nice fancy looking egg basket. So if we can kind of tweak the breeding to get nicer colored eggs and better layers, that's what we're going to try to do here. And this is going to help us with being able to have more goats, being able to have more chickens, maybe a cow in the future. We'll have to see what the future holds for us, but... This barn is going to be a game changer, guys. So exciting. All right, I guess it's time to stop daydreaming and let's get some work done. It's slippery, huh, Pluto? I need to get a measurement. to the end of the roofing material which I think is right there I want to go a little bit of an overhang on each side so 100 so if we go 102 it would give us an inch yeah let's go 102 we can overhang it a smidge Hey Figaro, you like the porch? Ah. I feel like all the animals are going to be fighting over. Come on, come in for a minute. Come on. We'll be back out. I know, it's nice out. Lost track of the forest through the trees, forgot what I was chasing. Spent so many nights living out at sea, and my heart is gone vacant. Everybody was close to me, all stayed on dry land. So now I'm driving back, on in the state west, I just gotta feel something. Not gonna wait till the morning, because something's gonna change my mind. I don't wanna change my mind. That galvanized 
metal sure is bright and the sun reflects off of it. Whew. Need some sunglasses. Might be a funky shape to draw a line on. But I like the profile of this ridge cap. Unfortunately, our local hardware stores didn't sell the inexpensive ridge cap for that Tough X roofing material. using a scuff pad. You could use like a scotch bright that you'd clean dishes with. I wanna just give it a light scuffing so that the paint sticks and doesn't pale. What I'm looking to do is take off the shininess. You don't need to get aggressive with sandpaper and scratch it all up like deep scratches. You just wanna scuff it. Yeah, it's all been scuffed up nicely. If you look down at it, there's no shiny spots. There, that fits nicely. Give it a quick wipe down. Get off any dirt or grime or wetness or anything. See how this paint works. Krylox Color Max Paint and Primer. Really? Wow. There we go. Childproof. I get the underside of the very ends. Cause we're gonna have an overhang. When you're painting, you don't have to get perfect coverage on the first coat. It's okay if it's sparsy like that. We're gonna be doing multiple coats. So we wanna just get kind of a quick coat on there. We don't wanna get it too heavy. I 
All right, we'll give it a few minutes and we'll let it dry. The other nice thing about doing light coats is it dries a lot quicker. It's already dry to touch. Stop back down this end. Pluto's like in the mud too. All right, one more coat should do it. Last coat. I ended up finishing the last coat. I let it dry and then I brought the ridge cap inside so it'll dry with some heat on it overnight and then tomorrow we'll install it. But I really like the profile. Of that ridge cap. What are you doing, Blossom? Girls, you didn't even touch your hay today. Look at it all. Oh, you didn't touch your hay. You like in the warm weather? Goat poop is a nice dark color so it attracts the sun and helps melt the snow. I like that. Where there's no goat poo, there's plenty of snow still. You need to go poop over there. Girls, you need to go poop over there to help melt the snow. Yeah, you do. You should. You got plenty of hay. Hope you girls are ready for a new buddy. She's a coming. Couple more days. Plus your babies, Willow. Let's check these maple trees while we're right here. I wonder if the sap's flowing today. There's a little bit of moisture in there, but not much. Nope, nothing in the buckets. Nothing, wow. I can't get over that, I mean, the sap's not flowing yet. No idea. Nope, nope. Wow. Tomorrow is supposed to be in the 40s, so maybe it'll start running tomorrow. If not then, I would say hopefully next week, because all week long next week is supposed to be in the 40s. The sun feels so good. Hey guys, thank you for all the eggs. Big girl loves that rock area. What's that? Look at that. Viewers always ask, why do these chickens always get the kitchen scraps? They're closer to the kitchen, and in the winter time, it's just easier to give it to them over here than bring it all the way up to New York City in the snow. Look 
they all laid in one nesting box. The eggs up here in this group, the eggs up here in the greenhouse chicken coop tend to always be the dirtiest because we have ducks in there. And ducks make a huge mess with the water. In the wintertime it freezes, but this time of the year it's all melting and making mud everywhere. So the chickens have dirty feet. Although ducks are fun to have, they make the chicken coop area a lot more messy. If I didn't answer all of your questions, you can leave it in the comments down below or go over to our Instagram or Facebook page and leave them over there. I posted a question on each one of those. So thanks for coming along on our journey with us, guys. You are a true blessing to our homestead. I know we are excited for spring, not just for building the barn, but for seeing dirt and being able to plant some vegetables in the ground and eat some fresh veggies. And what are you looking forward to the most this time of the year? We'll see you guys right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.